All right, let's talk about the ifs function in Google Sheets. And what it does is it evaluates multiple conditions and returns a value for the first condition that evaluates as true. All right, so that all that means is you give it a series of conditions, it stops right when it meets it and returns that value. So a great example of this is actually just a list of percentage grades and you wanna return a letter grade. So let's uh, type out the ifs function here. We're putting it in cell C2, but we're going to look at column B. So for this first one, we'll look at B2. And if it's greater than 90%, give it an A. Okay, so that's actually going to work on this one. It will see that it's greater than 90%, it will return an A. But let's build out the whole function so that it works for the entire column. And now we'll catch all the rest by saying less than 0.6. And we'll say that that's an F. I'll right, close this off and it gives, properly gives an A for the 99%. We'll drag it down and it gives a B, an A, and a B. So the S function is working great there. Let's move on to our second example. And what we'll do with this example is something a little bit original. We're going to return symbols based on values. So we'll look at the variance in uh, column D. And if it's positive, we'll do a green triangle facing up. If it's negative, we'll do a red triangle facing down. Uh, so to get these triangles into the sheet, I'll go over to the left here. I'll use the extension uh, that we make. I'll link to this in the description. And it inserts special characters. So we want a uh, triangle. So we'll filter by shape. We'll do an upward facing one, and a downward facing triangle. Close that. And we'll say ifs D2 is greater than zero, return, I'll just reference it here, C6. That'll bring the triangle in. If D2 is less than zero, return C7. And then we'll say D2 is equal to zero. If there's no variance, then we'll just, we'll just put a dash in there. All right, so we, uh, there we go. We got an upward facing triangle. Drag this down. Oh, I see I need to fix the references to C6. So that moves down if I don't fix it. So we'll put a dollar sign in the six, a dollar sign in the seven. And that way when we drag it down, it continues to look at the same symbols. Get rid of these conditional formatting rules. So that's how to do colored arrows, in this case, colored triangles to indicate trends. Okay, so that's easy. That's the ifs function again. And in the last example, what I didn't show you is if none of the conditions are met as you go through the formula, the formula returns an error, but we can work around that. So let's grab the last example here. It's uh, called avoiding errors. Copy this. So what we're doing in this example is we're saying, look, if something is severe, we're going to assign it to a particular person. If it's moderate, somebody else. And low or none, we'll just kind of leave it open. So if we just do the two, so we'll say ifs and then the uh, severity. So that's the value in A2. So if A2 has the word high, which it doesn't at this point, but say it did, we'd assign it to Rick. If A2 had Uh, moderate, we then assign it to Marge. But then if we just stop there, right, and that's the only two people that will assign to these things, and we drag this down. Oh, it was supposed to be medium. Let me change that. The formula isn't working very well because it's returning a pound in A when really if it's anything other than high or medium, you just want to leave it, you just want to have the word open in there. So what we can do is we can do a third condition here and just have it have the word true. So the ifs function as it goes through, it looks for a true condition. 
But if it doesn't find one, we're just going to say true. So we're just going to give it a true condition no matter what, just by typing true. That's what happens when you do that. And we'll just return uh, open for that when there's no matching value. Okay, so that's working. We'll drag that down. And that's how to do the ifs function and handle the errors if there is no condition that's met. The other thing that you can do is just the if function. So the if function we'll look at in this next video evaluates one condition. If that condition's not met, then you can do something else. So it functions a little bit differently. I'll see you in that video. Thanks for watching.